but I'm not sure if he got his run back, but he made it all the way to, uh, to top eight, taking it over Sola. And here he is meeting Unknown yet again. Two, two DNA classics here, the Lucario and the Sheik. It is, you know, like, you know, just a couple of a months ago, you know, the DNA classic was, you know, what? Like, I don't even, it wasn't even that long ago that I'm forgetting, like, you know, some of, like, the online players that we had from all over the place entering DNA. And now we have the age-old DNA classic right here, the actual offline one in VV versus Unknown right here. My boy coming out here with the Sheik, not the Wolf this time around. He is still whipping out Sheik again. Yeah, it's, it's precarious to try and uh, commit to the wolf here because just recently, Vivi has taken uh, a couple of sets on, or, or at very least taken up many uh, games, on Jackal's wolf, uh, I believe at Fusion, this week. So wow. might as well commit to the Sheik here, no, since that seems to be the, the common character that Unknown has been putting a lot of time into, reinvigorating re, uh, those old Smash 4 Sheik bones. Ooh, and Vivi looking for something that's definitely not true, but it could have definitely it could have killed if Unknown wasn't ready for it. Insanely hard to get out of, though. I mean, one of the biggest changes to Lucario is that that kill confirm. It's a little different, and now you know they'd like to prefer to go for that in the air with that white bounce uh, aura sphere up. Ooh, narrowly getting the reverse hit of it too right there. That is one thing that Unknown has done for absolute years is those uh, reverse up air hitboxes. It's you know. Something that really like any advanced Sheik player is the forward smash takes the stock. It's something any advanced Sheik player should really know how to do is not only know how, but when to like mix up what direction you're facing when you decide to chase them with that up air. Try to catch their DI off guard because Sheik's body is so skinny and the pattern is so similar on her outfit that if you're not too quick to the eye, sometimes it's actually a little difficult to see what direction she's facing and that will impact your DI depending on which one she is. Yeah, it's, it's a rough spot to be in, but this is exactly where Lucario wants to be. Past 65, but not quite above 100. And you have a little bit, you're a lot more flexible against Sheik, who lacks a, a lot of raw kill power. Ooh, especially Ooh. looking for that tech chase to make up for it is unknown, but whiffing it slightly, and now Lucario getting a press off of ledge here. Vivi has to Vivi trying all these different angles, but back air. <laughs> oh, fundamentals, baby. You love to see it. Getting those needle, getting those wave bounce needle reverse right there. Uh, needle reverse cancels, I should say, to get those forward air, uh, to get those nares and those back airs. My mistake. This is still a beautiful sight to behold. Sheik. Not killing just yet, she's got to rely sometimes on the confirms and sometimes the higher percents to do it when the percent gets too high for those needle confirms to work. So now you see Unknown sort of fishing for it, and I bet dollars to donuts that with the way this is going on this particular matchup that he might be the one to actually lose this stock first unless this edge guard is completed. Just looking like it might be, Ooble. Beautiful tech though by Vivi. Vivi playing this really well because of Lucario having so much order and therefore so much distance on extreme speed. He can go far deeper than any other character in this game. It's just, can he keep up with Sheik when on stage is the problem. Aura Sphere movement is great and all, but catching an elusive ninja, slippery at best. <laughs> That it is. I mean, she's she got some of the best mobility in this game for a reason, and mobility is low-key more important than power in a platform fighter, at least in the opinion of this humble, at least in the humble opinion of this humble caster, I should say. But now you see him still hanging onto the stock, finally sinking low to get that edge guard at around 180%. Borderline max aura on the part of Vivi right there. Unknown killing him before he's able to become a problem, now trying to tack on as much insurance as he can before and if he loses this next stock. <laughs> and 51's a pretty solid answer. Ooh, but look at this man go. Yeah, it, the Vortex just doesn't stop, and he was looking for the hard committal anti-air. Going low, it's just active back air. This is where she makes her money. Edge guarding is so strong with this character because you can throw out a million active moves and still manage to recover, especially when on ledge hang like that. Finding the jump read is Weezy with the Aura Sphere. This game's even. It's it's a frightening even. If you are uh, if you are Vivi, you know you can't commit to too much because of how good uh, Unknown's advantage state has been. But all you need is one solid hit to lead into another 40 and then another one to kill. 
I just love the way that unknown is moving, man. He's just constantly he's mixing up where he's going to go to just to try to keep Vivi on his toes since he's the one trying to having to fall out of disadvantage. It's like he's specifically moving in different spots, but there's spots where he knows he's still going to be able to catch him wherever he decides to land at the end of the day. And that's one of the, you know, that's not even just a chic thing, really. That's honestly just a I'm good at the game thing. That I know how to just constantly mix up where I'm going to catch you off your toes when you're the one in disadvantage, as it should be when you are the one keeping your opponent there. But this is a scary position for a Sheik, my friend. One potential R sphere or a back air right here can put you in a horrible spot, potentially even kill right here. This is where we're gonna get some true. <laughs> we're gonna we might get some true Smash Four shenanigans for a second oh, here. Oh, oh my he God! He read it. That's so true. He read the jump, but missing the back air afterwards. But hey, hell of respect to Unknown. You're Sheik at 40 against a 160% Lucario. You're dead to that second back air, but he parries it and finds the down tilt confirm afterwards. Yeah. I I've known Un this man unknown, for years. unknown man. <laughs> I've known this man for years. If he is nervous, which most normal, which most normal people would be, when they find themselves in the situations that in that he's in, he's doing a wonderful job at hiding it. Or if he's just not nervous at all, my friend. That is Brian Unknown to a T, constantly fighting these uphill battles with his fundamental base characters against the ones that, you know, are rewarded for losing at the video game. It's just, it's the lifelong struggle of an unknown. Well, that's kind of what made him known in the first place. So ironically enough there, game two. Yeah, we're second verse, same as the first. It's a little bit. I mean, if you can see what you, see what I mean, just Vivi in a pickle, in disadvantage, fighting his way back on. Lucario's disadvantage isn't necessarily the strongest thing. He's a little bit floaty, which can make juggling, uh, juggling or characters who are good at catching landings uh, very, very strong against him. But you play your cards right, then you get this beautiful situation that Lucario loves to be in yet again. Just Oh, never mind. That drag down up there was right on point for unknown at a spot that he very much needed it. Looking like a damn joker out here, but the only joke right now, <laughs> the only joke right now might be Vivi's chances of winning this set if Brian keeps playing in the way that he's doing. My God, with the jabs, keeping it going. Oh my God. You looked away from the screen when that happened. I, I saw that, oh, man. The suicide powder. <laughs> oh my god, you blinked at the worst possible time. Ubel, no. Well, oh, you're I'm gonna... so, un so unfortunate. But yeah, you, you, all, you all saw what happened. We'll get the replay afterwards for sure. But this is <laughs> when you're willing to do that, when you're willing to make those big trades, that's it puts on, it, it puts on not only a, a statement towards your opponent, but it just keeps on going. It just puts momentum on your side, and a quick 74 is uh, is unknown. He's not stopping. He's chasing BB down all the way across the stage from left to right, and these F smashes oh, aren't gonna do anything. <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> oh my God! Like a damn Joker player out here looking crazy right now with this pressure. And I agree to go for like a suicide dare like that. It honestly takes a level of confidence that. Uh, you know, Brian only whips out in the situations where he feels like he needs them, man. He doesn't. Me he does not whiff those, man. He only goes for them if he knows they're gonna hit. That's done. Absolutely body bag out of the losers bracket. Unknown advances further into top eight. You need to look at these replays right now. Don't say anything. Just take a gander at the screen. Okay. You need to see is, this. Yeah, this is the this is the up smash for the first one. Fair. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? That is the same kind of idea. Thank you, King Ark, for the follow. Uh, that is the same idea that happened in games one and two, or, or in the in game one and continued into game two, where he would go into the he would force Vivi to go low, then he would place drop zone back airs, drop zone nares, interrupting the extreme speed before the hitbox come came out. In game two, it just looked like he got tired of resetting the edge guard. I just wanted to finish it without trying to go for another back air. 